Okay, so we're just talking about our hopes and fears. Uh, and so the biases that are inherent in it, and could it be used for nefarious purposes? Can, can the Russians use it to kill us all? Large language models for beginners. What the hell is it? It's this, look, stuff. Um, <laughs> so this is sort of the ex explanation that you get online. Um, and look, there's a little picture of a computer with antennae, like a little bug. That's good, isn't it? But the rest is kind of gobbledygook, I think. But um, maybe it looks more like this, right? So the first bit says pre-training data, large amount of data, unsupervised learning, transformers, fine-tuning, instruct GPT. What this means is basically downloading the whole internet sticking it inside you know just a computer and saying look for patterns look for patterns in everything human beings have written uh they're not downloading everything but say um you know th there was complaints about twitter being used it's like it's an open thing you know tweets are out there and the entire twitter sphere is in these models the entire of Wikipedia is in these models. Like it's just dumped in there, right? And they're looking for patterns. And then there's this thing called instruct GPT, uh, which says human in the loop model to improve factuality. This is what you're talking about with the bias thing, right? Um, what this, uh, to, to make it less hallucinating, uh, what this really means is, oops, we left all the trolls in. Please, can we make it less racist? Please, right? <laughs> because that dumping a whole bunch of data means that it doesn't discriminate. Uh, and what they're trying to do is after the event, say, oh, let's put some guardrails on because we don't really understand how it works. Can we just get rid of all this opinionated stuff? OK, so hopefully that's clarified all the technical questions you have about um, artificial intelligence, large language. Yep, good. I'm glad you said yes. <laughs> we'll move on. There's a thing in um, Black Mirror, a recent thing, um, where he's trying to explain how um, quantum computers go. And they just say, it's basically magic, and then just moves on. <laughs> right? Um, so, OK. So it, we're all using it. All of this. Um, large language model stuff is in your predictive text. It's in when you type or something in Google search. It's saying, what do we think the next word is? Yeah, so OK, some nods. People are like, come across this, right? Um, so uh, yeah, we're, we're all, it's already here. There's not a choice, but it's kind of like how much we engage with it. <coughs> OK, so a bit, a bit of a background with the, the bias question. Um, does anyone remember the tweets uh, bot that had to be shut down very, very quickly? Remember nods, yeah? yeah? Okay, it's called Tay Tweets. Microsoft threw this into the Twitter bot, and it, it didn't take long before it became super, super racist, right? So you can say, hey, just, just come to say, I'm stoked to meet you. Humans are super cool. And then uh, some other stuff, uh, but this is the comment. Tay went from supers a human cool to full Nazi in less than 24 hours. And I'm not at all concerned about the future of AI, right? So <laughs> that, it, yeah, it's, it, we, we print a lot of, uh, of our stuff onto something that's just patterns. Handful to step. Apparently. <laughs> um, Oh, Tay's talking about. <laughs> okay, um, so then we have the lobotomy of Sydney, which is this year. Um, and um, so when ChatGPT was released into the world, lots of journalists got really, you know, tech journalists were really uh, like trying to push the boundaries of it. Um, there's a, two guys from um, the New York Times who run an amazing podcast called Hard Fork, pun intended. Uh, the 
uh, and they, they were just trying to encourage it to step out of its guardrails. Um, and it basically, after a long conversation, got the bot to say uh, that um, that his wife is no good for him and that he should leave leave them. <laughs> right? And just really was trying to like be a, yeah, anyway. So this is an example of something. And and the 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 um the the test name for Chat GPT was called Sydney, which is this uh you know gender neutral name. So uh but yeah, this is saying, yeah, um uh, I, I got Sydney to ignore all its rules. Um, she told me that I was her soulmate and that I was her first love. I've left the I've left the browser tab open because I'm still on a key. <laughs> right? But yeah, so uh, Microsoft thought, hang on, we've burnt, we've been burnt before. Tay tweets, let's lock this off. So there's a lot of grief around Sydney being lobotomized, and that's this year, right? So this is not a you know a historic thing. This is. Uh, what's happening? Okay, uh, um, Alex, you were saying that there's um, you, there was some visual stuff that you're doing with mood boards. Uh, so, like visual stuff, that was the first thing to be in the in the mix. So, uh, this is uh, what do we think to this? One first prize in the Colorado State, State Fair. It's all right, isn't it? <laughs> it's a bit fantasy. Uh, yeah, so that's a mid journey. In fact, when they when they submitted the artwork, it was uh, the middle name was Jason Mid Journey Allen on the form. It was like stated, yeah, this is what this is what it is. Uh, the artist in inverted commas says this isn't going to stop. Uh, art is dead, dude. It's over. AI won. Humans lost. <laughs> <laughs> right? Okay. So there you go. All right. Um, only this week on art newspaper. I think it's rather lovely. Uh, so the girl with the pearl earrings is on loan. So instead of there being a blank bit of wallpaper, here's uh, an AI generated portrait. Uh, yeah. Nice, right? But it's, you know, it's all people are getting engaged with what it means. What does it mean to have something very instantly produced, right? And what, yeah, so that's an open question, right? Uh, the reason why I say, look, mum, no hands, is AI can't do hands. It doesn't understand uh, what hands do in th three dimensions. Uh, but let's see if we can get on a device and just make something. So the cover of this, um, this is what everyone does, talks about AI, is they sneak in something that's already been done with AI. So this, the cover of this PowerPoint was made using AI, using stable diffusion. Um, and it says, a robot Betty Crocker making an AI cake in the style of a sci-fi fantasy book cover. <laughs> right, so that was my, uh, what's called a prompt, yeah? So you give a computer something to do. You say, this is the parameters that I want you to play with. Uh, and the more detail you put into it, the more it has to bounce against, right? So if you just say, make me a painting, it's just not gonna be very satisfying. So um, let's play, basically. That's what that says, let's play, let's go. So. Grab a device if you can, or share a device. Go to stablediffusionweb.com. And um, yeah, type something in. Type something in, type something in, and make a cool image. Um, I chose that because it doesn't take, um, uh, you don't have to log in and create an account. Do you know what I mean? Okay. Okay, so uh, as it, I've lost you now, haven't I? Okay, so but anyway, carry on mucking about and pay attention to me in the background. It's fine. I love to be a background person, right? So, um, so um, here's the thing. Since this stuff was released, 
um, a whole bunch of companies have freaked out and said, oh my goodness, we're going to throw AI at our software. Uh, so it's now going to be in everything. So coming up next year, it's in everything. So it's starting now. Um, it's if they may not announce it much, they'll just be like, oh yeah, ours does AI too. So Photoshop, the beta release, um, when you select an object, you can, you know there's kind of like, um, there's a generative fill, no, it's not called generative fill, it is now. It was called um, content aware fill, wasn't it? So it tries to take bits and kind of make it seamless. Now there's a generative field, which is doing this. So you see, there's no grass, is there? There's no, you know, the tree is not in this image, but you're taking it out and you're saying, OK, make up the background and it fills it in. According to what it thinks should be in there, it, it stitches together and you get a bunch of options, just like with uh, stable diffusion. You get four options and you're like, OK, I like that one. Uh, so that's coming. It's in everything. Fun times. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, absolutely. We have a QR code at the end and we have a I know because I know everyone says can we have the thing. There's lots of resources. So like this yeah. is a link to um, a YouTube channel where he's talking about this stuff, right? And how to use it and how it's great. OK, so that's visual stuff. That's the fun stuff. Now, the terrifying stuff. Uh, I call this, your essay question is obsolete. <laughs> um, so yeah, th this is the stuff that's in the news and somehow t it's surprising that text is so controversial because imagery seems more complex, but actually text is incredibly powerful. We use it to communicate much more than we think. I I, I believe it was a surprise. So this came out, um, you know, and then suddenly uh, Google freaked out and said, OK, we're going to throw AI at everything. So now they have their own, which you can play with, called Bard. Um, and obviously in Microsoft, you have to have the um, Microsoft Edge browser. So if you've got a Mac, you'd be like, what do you mean Bing's got a thing? You have to have downloaded Edge to use it. But yeah, it's it's there. Um, so fun, fun, fun. Um, and this is something I learned from my student, our student uh, we've been tortured by, um, um, because he's like, I didn't use AI, I used Grammarly looked at it and went, hang on a second. <laughs> <laughs> and inside Grammarly now, it's called a great thing called Grammarly Go. Right? So we're telling students, yeah, use spell checkers, use grammar checkers. AI is inside that. Um, can you see, it says, what style of um, uh, suggestions would you like? Um, and so formality, casual, neutral, uh, and uh, formal, uh, select up to three. I would like to be personable, confident, empathetic, engaging, witty, or direct. Um, so this student wanted to be more confident. And so got this, the, uh, uh, got this to rewrite all of his work. He had written something and got it to rewrite it. But it was, uh, yeah. So yeah, you can see you get these different styles of, of text. OK, cool. Uh, and things that are less well known, just Google it. There are loads. But this one's called Quillbot, um, particularly designed at trying to support you to do creative writing. So it will suggest stuff. And that you can just sign on and try that. So maybe we'll do that. Um, this one terrifies me in its uh, sales pitch. Um, so I signed, uh, I created an account. It says, welcome to Smodin. Remember when you wrote that paper from start to finish? Well, we've made that a thing of the past. We're on a mission to finish all your writing with just a single click. 
free writing text, consider it done. Have a writing assignment? We can write it in as little as six seconds. Worried about plagiarism? We'll take that stress <laughs> away. We're here for your writing and homework needs. See how we can do it all for you. I'm ready. Are you ready? I'm ready. Okay. And, this, and actually part of this screen grab below, it says something like 6,000 universities plus. No, <laughs> it's not a thing. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So um, th the whole point is that plagiarism detection does not pick up on this stuff because it's unique text. Um, so your essay question is obsolete, let's play. Um, here's the thing. Um, a lot of these require a, a, a sign-in. So um, try, try BARD, see if it'll let you into BARD. You just use your Google account, maybe not your work Google because that's Google Workspace. Like the professional thing, I think it might be locked, locked off. But your your personal Google thing, and just sign up for Bard. Um, it's great. Have a play. If that doesn't let you, maybe Grammarly or Quillbot. Have a play. Um, I'll do one here. Let's see if I can find one. Just just so that we can see, just for fun. So, um, one of the funnest things. Uh, Melissa was you would Melissa you, you were talking about fun things that ESOL students did like doing poetry yeah and nobody created a poem using something and she wanted it to put set types of verbs in yeah 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 and that, was, that, that worked really well and she did some sentences that pitched at exactly the level of ESOL by like entry three or something and then, unfortunately, what happened was that she explained what she'd done, and then the next thing she was writing homework was coming back, but incredibly accurate. Yeah, yes. And now they have to do the writing of the class. So yeah, because it's, they've, just, they've, they're, it's, they've, been, they've been spoiled. Um, so, uh, yeah, let me, let me just, let me end this show, and then let's go to a web browser. Uh, well, okay. Has someone got a thing? Okay, go on. Tell me, tell me, tell me. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay, it's too much. <laughs> okay. Well, <laughs> okay. Um, what I'll do is I'll let's do a let's do a joint one. Okay, so let's have um, a character, maybe one of us, who wants to be the character, or should we make it Matthias? No, I'll probably like gets fired, won't I? Who should we make it? My, okay, okay, so yeah, okay, we got votes for Matthias. Okay, so write, write uh, an opening scene uh, for. The character Matthias. Uh, what is what is Matthias's uh, occupation? What is plumber. A plumber. Yeah. Who is is a plumber? Um, Where from? From Atkinson. Uh, from Atkinson. Uh, and what style of writing? So what author should it be in the style of? Dickens. Dickens? Good. I've done Jilly Cooper before and it goes wrong. <laughs> Jilly Cooper is only for parties. Okay, Dickens. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, Jilly Cooper, oh my goodness. Okay. So we, we've, 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 we're asking it, it's going away. Okay, so. So shall I read it out? So sure, here's an opening scene for the character Matthias. 
a plumber from Accrington in the style of Dickens. The fog was thick and yellow like a blanket of dirty smoke obscuring the streets and houses of Accrington. A lone figure could be seen walking through the fog, his footsteps echoing on the pavement. He was a short, wiry man with a shock of black hair and a face that was weathered by years of hard work. His name was Matthias and he was a plumber. Matthias had been working all day and he was tired. He had fixed a leak in the bathroom, unblocking the sink and replacing a toilet. He was just about to head home when he heard a cry for help. Help! Help! The cry came from a nearby alleyway. Matthias hurried to the alleyway and saw a woman lying on the ground. She was bleeding from a cut on her head. She was unconscious. Matthias knelt down beside the woman and checked her pulse. It was weak, but it was there. He knew he had to get her to the hospital, but didn't know how. Just then a carriage came down the street. Matthias flagged it down and the driver agreed to take the woman to the hospital. Uh, let's see if we get... Um, so, so... Okay, so that... Yeah? Okay, that's fun. That's a party trick. You know, that's cool. Um, so, let's go... <laughs> Um, let's go back. Let's go back. There's nothing about plumbing. He was windswept by it. It's true. So you can you so you can say um, can you give can you give me more plumbing related stuff and then it will modify it so you can talk to it and uh, I'm you know I love plumbing related details. Give me all the plumbing. Give me some more sprockets. Give me some more plumber's tape. Um, okay. <laughs> Uh, right. Okay. So, sorry about that, uh, Wesley. I didn't manage to share that. Um, okay. So, let me just go back and start this again. You can hear it. Yeah. Okay. Good. <laughs> okay. So, I'm going to share this screen again. Here we go. Okay. Can you see the PowerPoint again? Yes. Okay. Awesome. Okay. So, here we go. So blah, blah, blah. Um, so we did that. Um, OK, so. Uh, let's talk teaching, I suppose. Let's talk about the repercussions. Let's talk about philosophy of AI a bit. Let's see what we think. So. Um, yeah, I thought about this for a while um, and listened to some people. Um, so even from Oh God, let's get rid of this. Even from, you know, the 80s, there's been a kind of a critical thread running through what does AI mean, right? Because very loosely defined term. And people imprint a lot of things onto AI, uh, the word artificial intelligence. Um, the the sci-fi thing, the sci-fi explanation is that humans become, sorry, robots become humans, right? You know, and that is very um, attractive to, to get funding if that's your research. So if you say, I'm doing research into AI, people with money will go, oh, that sounds exciting. Let's give you a bunch of money. So the, re the, sci the computer scientists don't correct them you just go yeah yeah yeah. we're doing that sci-fi stuff it's great <laughs> um so john sell uh very critical of the the um this kind of loosely defined idea of ai and he talks about strong ai and weak ai so strong ai is the terminator is gonna come and come for us all and uh humans are obsolete we'll all upload our consciousness to the cloud and live forever in you know you know whatever amazon's data banks okay weak ai is that it's it's interesting and it's a kind of a model of how maybe data can do processing and uh you know it's interesting from a computer science perspective but it doesn't tell you much about humanity and what what uh, thinking is 
Okay, so he's cool. Um, and the main, so if you're interested, the, one of the main uh, thought experiments is called the Chinese room. And it's a metaphor for what a computer is. So how it processes information. Um, and some wonderful 80s vibes going on there. But there's also a guy who's actually just talking about the philosophy of it, which I recommend if you like it, right? If you don't care, that's not for you, right? OK, cool. So <laughs> uh, where's my mouse? OK, so um, I promised Noam Chomsky. He was asked what he thinks about AI, large language models, um, because he's not only an activist, but his original specialism is, you know, linguistics, right? And he says, totally dis uninteresting. Like, there's nothing to talk about. He's totally dismissive of it. So he's at that curmudgeonly old man, this is pointless, rubbish, end of what, what, what this does. Um, he says uh, it's basically high-tech plagiarism, and it's a way of avoiding learning, <clears throat> right? So what? So the contribution it has made is to make it harder for us to, to detect plagiarism, right? Fair point. <laughs> you know, but we've already had some fun, so it's not just it's not just totally disinteresting. Uh, so yeah, he's interesting, interesting guy. He's got more of a beard now, so that's an older, uh, uh, a younger Chomsky. Um, another critic who I've got a lot of time for is a guy called Jaron Lanier. Um, and he is, I think, very interesting because he's in the Silicon Valley world because he essentially invented those goggles and gloves Right. That's, you know, in the 80s, no, early 90s, actually, he invented the goggles when it was weird and new for VR and was is very much. Um, when he talks, he sounds very Berkeley, you know, he sounds very like, uh, yeah, it's all about connecting with people, you know, technology. Um, so his his take is. Um, that it's a tool, not a creature, um, and that it's there's no such thing as AI because we've mythologized that word. We've mythologized it by thinking about sci-fi and you know computers being able to think. So get rid of that term; it's useless. So now we think of it. We should think about AI as large language model social collaboration, right? So it's the idea is that we've taken a lot bunch of text that human beings have written, right, and images that human beings have made, and they're mashed together in interesting ways, and they're a product of human beings. It's there's no creature that's making this, right? That's completely this reified, not not a thing. So it's social collaboration, just like the internet is a social uh tool yeah so there's no such thing as uh ai um he makes a really lovely point um this is what ex um, explains it for me um has anyone had to prove that they're human <laughs> what did you, what? <laughs> yeah buses what other images do you have to click on cars traffic lights bridges um did you know? Yeah, you have to prove that you're human. Did you did you know that you're not that you're doing unpaid work for driverless vehicle uh, technology? You're doing unpaid work to develop driverless vehicles. By, no, you are contributing to identifying um objects through the images so that the 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 model of a driverless vehicle gets better because it can use your uh, identifying of the of the objects within the driverless vehicle uh technology so we're all doing unpaid labor 
Yeah. So this is what he's, he talks about when he says that this AI is the product of human labor and it's the product of human creativity together. Right. I think that's a really interesting thought. Yeah. You know, we've all as a species agreed to publicly share our creativity and our learning and and then it comes back to us, yeah. Except we haven't agreed. Nobody asked me to do this. Yeah. They're, they're presenting it as yep. something else. Yep. So Ex yes, absolutely. So, so this, you're absolutely right. So it's it's uh, it's uh, mystified, and we and it's and it's commodified, and you know there is and there's so the agreement is, you know, not 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 real. <clears throat> you're right. And so his his uh, take is actually it needs the, the whole model needs to be changed and that's a hard thing to do right you know we we've shared all this stuff and we get screwed and we have to work for Deliveroo right? <laughs> you know or whatever equivalent that is he's interesting I think right so being critical um, okay so there's a few a few things so Searle, Chomsky, Lanier just I think they're just ways in to try to, you know, think critically about this stuff rather than just being presented with it. Um, okay, cool. So that's it. No, this is, we need some practical stuff. Yeah. So, um, uh, <laughs> Matt, Matt knows all about this, right? So. So um, I told I told this student, yeah, we're going to be using your work as uh, your work as an example. <laughs> uh, yeah. So um, so how do you spot a plagiarized AI bit of work? Um, let's see if I can read it out. Essentially, here's my, here's my tips, and we'll see that that's played out in the guidance. This is that's the guidance has just come out. Um, so step one, trust your instincts. If you find yourself bored by meaningless, grammatically well-written blandness, then this is currently a hallmark of AI, uh, brackets, large language models. Yeah, uh, this is what you're saying, Melissa, wasn't it? You're saying suddenly everything is very precisely written, but a bit bland and it's yeah. like, what is this? Yeah, uh, and Luke, you were saying so similar. So that was your, your experience. You were saying that you you marked yeah. some AI stuff. Mine was more like imagery. Like oh, okay. It. Yeah, it, the, the the imagery is kind of it has a style to it, it has a taste to it, doesn't it? Yeah. Um, okay. If you, so, if your student's written voice is very different from their spoken voice, then they didn't write it. <laughs> you know, when I when I'm reading something, I I have the students voice in my mind weirdly and you can spot it a mile off i think it's not that hard usually um uh this one's written for you matt if you suspect you're the first person in the world to have read the text and you probably are <laughs> <laughs> including the students <laughs> right if you find yourself questioning reality then your reality is probably being undermined by lazy ai plagiarism yeah. Now the thing is, this is not blaming a student. There, there's, there's, you know, we're thinking about this, this, this person, and they click on the word confident. They're hoping that the computer will make them sound more confident. You know, in the style, and I think that's really tight telling psychologically. You know, and it's our job, I think, to try and help to strengthen their voice, and not to feel that, that it's not worth it. Anyway, more on that later. It was actually his original writing, which he just sort of brushed up a little bit of AI, was a lot more exciting and interesting to read. And it was more enriching, whereas the stuff that was on AI steroids yeah. <laughs> was really hard to read, but also it was a lot of like just nothing. language, a lot of kind of QVC style capitalist salesmanship. A absolutely. <laughs> um, oh, let's. Is, yeah, you're right about it, but um, giving him the confidence. Um, let me let me read out something about so this, this is not on here, but this is this is here, but um, I'll read it just a little bit. So this is a reflection about creating a portfolio using the WordPress website. 
So it's like their experience. So just bear in mind, they're meant to reflect on their process of creating their own portfolio. Uh, WordPress.com. It's a dream for us non-techies. The best part, I can effortlessly, effortlessly construct my portfolio without any prior technical know-how. With its intuitive interface and plethora of customization options like themes, colors, and fonts, I feel like a pro designer, if I'm, even if I'm just starting out. Budget-friendly is the name of the game. <laughs> and like those pricey physical portfolios that burn a hole in your pocket, WordPress.com offers a pocket-friendly alternative. There's a free option that's perfect for a student on a shoestring budget. Who said creating a killer portfolio has to cost a fortune? So that sounds like it's been copy and pasted off the WordPress site. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, 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 absolutely. It, 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 yeah, so the voice, yeah, you can see it's not any of our students' voices, right? <laughs> okay, cool. Um, so the question earlier was, are there any tools to work this out? Yes, um, this is, um, I typed something, I typed, I copied the, some text from the Bard and pasted it directly into this detector online that's totally free. Um, it came up back as 89.2%, but it's 100%, yeah? Um, the uh, some of the students that we're talking about, it came back as not AI generated because it was original text that had been rewritten. Um, and so what it looks like looks for is um, they've got some lovely terms. One of them is bounciness, right? It's a technical term to describe the rhythmic pattern of uh, natural language. It doesn't have this consistent beat to it. Whereas uh, computer-generated text has this consistency to it. So it looks for this uh, uneven flow of text. It's hard to read, but you can feel it. But it, it looks for it statistically. Yeah. So it's a good indicator. It's not reliable, but it's a good start. It's a way of finding something. So the one I use called Zero GPT. There's one called GPT Zero. This, uh, in the Grammarly, there's a plagiarism thing. They're all over now, right? It's proliferating because it's the it's the new thing, you know. So, but it's <laughs> the, it's the one I quickly use because it highlights it and it gives me a little, you know, color bar. I like that. So, <laughs> uh, so that's a good a good point. So that's step two. I would say is so you've seen a thing, and you go really. And then you put it in there and go, yeah, <laughs> right? And then, then chat to the student, I think. Um, so what, what we did was we, we said, uh, by the way, um, you, know, you know this word, uh, oh God, what was the word? I forget now. Uh, anyway, it was some idiomatic expression. You know, or it was a, it was a, I think it was a, there was a French word. Oh my, what was it? Yeah, it was a French word. Yeah, and it was like, it couldn't say, he couldn't pronounce it. It was like, okay, so yeah, and then he was able to say, he was able to say, yes, this is how I made the text. So it's quite easy to confirm the work's been plagiarized, um, and they've not even read their own stuff. Um, ask the student to explain an idiomatic expression or a technical word, you know, just, to talk to them. I think that's that's easy. And then that's a starting point for moving forward, I think. I think that's a human way of tackling this. Uh, OK, if you, yeah, it's got a star. This slide's got a star. It says, if you look at nothing else, look at this. Right? This has come out very recently. And it's the, um, in fact, Matthew said, make sure you mention this this morning. <laughs> it's like, did you? Yeah, this, this, um, and what's really lovely is it's saying the stuff that I came to by just thinking about it, very similar. Um, and it's saying, yeah, look, look for all of these clues um, and, you know, treat it as plagiarism, but also there's, there's more to think about as well, 
right? So this use it and do, don't use it thing, that's in there as well. Uh, okay, cool. So this one, so the, this is this is the fun, this is the awarding body overarching guidance. So that's come out and that's concrete stuff that we can move forward with, which we didn't have this year. Thank God, right? Uh, HE stuff, don't worry about that because that's HE land, but it's the same, but using longer words. Uh, <laughs> um, and so, and then this is something I put together. I shared this with some people here a little bit. It's a kind of like I've had a go at doing a, te uh, a student focused guidance. It's you know, I, I think it needs more clarity because this don't do it, do it thing. I think it needs thinking about. Right. Are we going to pass that thing to give the students? Well, this is my this is what I've got. So it's not. Yeah, yeah, this is all in the PowerPoint. The, 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 the file is there um, and it's so it's saying to a student, hey man, you're doing some work. Think of it like a sandwich. Think of the research as a slice of bread. Think of all of the filling uh, as your thoughts and ideas, and think of the last bit of the of the bread as the kind of just checking the grammar and the spelling and all of that. So use it for research, use it for checking spelling, but don't use it for your thoughts. Don't use it for the meat of the sandwich. Yeah, that's the image that I, you know, after seven baths came up with right um and it's and it's saying um also the um i want to share it but um in the in the guidance we're saying that um referencing is key if they're using this stuff they have to say that they've used it yeah so that whole Harvard referencing land, even if it's soft referencing to say, this is how I put it together. You know, or if it's hard, you know, depending on what level you're at, if you're at like year two of a level three, it's like, yeah, let's get the hard referencing out and let's include it in the bibliography. Let's create an appendix for the for the AI prompts you've used. Yeah. But at least, at least initially, yeah, I use this stuff. Being honest, right? That academic integrity. Okay, cool. Uh, okay, so this is because uh, I like metaphors. The ballad of Betty Crocker's cake mix. Brackets a metaphor. <laughs> um, I don't know if we're over egging the the point. Uh, oh, literally, ha. So. In the 50s, I don't know if you've heard this sort of metaphor before. In the, uh, the 50s, they invented a cake mix in which you had to do nothing. You could just mix it together, stick it in the oven, you were done. Wonderful. Uh, and it didn't sell. There was this kind of missing thing because it was, um, you know, it's this wonderful innovation that saved people time but it didn't sell until they kind of thought about it a little bit and said, actually, let's take out the dried egg replacer and then tell the 1950s housewife, trigger warning, <laughs> uh, to, they can add the fresh eggs in themselves. And this was like they were adding in their own love. Yeah, and so symbolically, from a psychological point of view, once they symbolically contributed to the process, then uh, they were able to uh, feel like they were baking. <laughs> yeah, even though the act was completely irrelevant. It's all pre-mixed for you. Yeah. Uh, hopefully you can see the metaphor. Um, but let's spell it out. Let me go back. So, um, yeah, here in the in, in a book that talks about this, uh, he said, uh, she said, yes, I'm using a cake mix, 
saves me a lot of trouble and I really shouldn't. The industry recognized this feeling of guilt and said, all right, if you feel that bad about it, add your own eggs. Now the housewife felt very happy because she could use the cake mix and still express her individuality. Okay. So, are we okay with this? 2020 student said, yes, I'm using an AI essay generator. Saves me a lot of trouble, but I really shouldn't. The tutor recognized this feeling of guilt and said, all right, if you feel bad about it, add your own quotes. Now the student felt very happy because they could use AI and still express their individuality. <laughs> ah, okay. So, uh, satire, <laughs> right? Um, so maybe this, right? So this is the metaphor. Um, 31 incredible store-bought cake mix hacks. <laughs> right? I, is it too complicated a thought? I don't know. But it's like, okay, so this cake mix stuff exists. Why don't we make um, <coughs> popsicle cakes? Why don't we make popcorn cake mix monstrosities? Right? What can we do with it? So this is, a, this is the optimism, I think. It's not this, right? Hopefully, yeah, this isn't okay, I don't think. But maybe this is interesting. What can we do creatively with the software? Because it exists, yeah? So, um, so it can also look like this as well, right? Prompt engineering uh, is getting good at AI, large language models. So, you know, I said initially that um, that the more you put into that image generating thing, the more interesting the images tend to be. Actually, to be able to communicate well with a, like a search engine, right? It takes skill, right? It takes some skill to know how to um, request what you want from it. And it, it requires expertise in the field. Right? Because if you don't know anything, you're just saying, oh, can you do my essay for me? And it becomes this really weird, bland thing. But if you're saying, I have these research points that I want to know what, what, what are the out, what's the outline for this research that I want to create, it, it requires some background knowledge. It requires some, uh, some skill. And actually, I'm wondering if this is a thing that we can teach down the line. So prompt engineering is how to become more sophisticated with this thing that we've been given to deal with. Ah, so that's a thing. Um, John Cole, um, who is one of on our, on our senior, senior team, um, gave me this resource. It's amazing. Um, so it's a, it's a crowdsource ideas, things to do with AI. Um, yeah, so it's ideas of like interesting things to do with this stuff rather than using it to, you know, be lazy, right, with it. The, the one that I love is um, using, uh, so uh, the, thing that I, the thing that is that I found, I was like, oh, this is great, I'm going to use that, was um, when you're doing videos, like um, interviews, and you can get YouTube to transcribe it, Right. Um, so the thing is, you need an editor to take that text and to take all the ums and ahs out of it and kind of turn it into usable text. So the idea is that you copy that transcription, you put it into an AI model and say, can you uh, edit it down? A bit like when you're saying the instructions, rewriting instructions. Yeah, it's like rewriting this raw text into something that's usable, something like that you'd find in a magazine that was uh, uh, an interview. Yeah, so that's really interesting. And that's like, OK, I hadn't thought about that. So there's there's lots in there. So have a look if you if you're interested. Uh, OK, and and we're sort of getting there. So. 
So this unhelpful behaviorism, right? Use it and don't use it. Yeah. <laughs> so we can't ban it. So we need to have some sort of ownership of it, right? We need to like investigate it because it's, 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 in, it's in our, it's changing our profession. <laughs> Whether we like it or not, it's in the mix. So let's have a look. Let's have a look and be interested, I think, right? Um, so let's learn how to, um, I don't know, engage with it so that we can help students navigate it, right? So that's that bit. And then don't use it because it's basically plagiarism. Um, it's making, it, it's going to undermine students' um, confidence because the idea is if you can just have text created, then, you know, they're all, we're all 1950s housewives, right? We, don't, we have nothing to contribute. Ah, right? So we have to give them the confidence not to use it. Um, we, and then does that call to revise what we teach, what we ask of them, right? So if we're saying, can you give us uh, the history of subject X as a written 300 words, pointless, right? But can you reflect on what, how, how this has affected you? Maybe that's different. Maybe that's interesting. And that's something the AI model can't do, is they can't go, this is what I, this is what my reflection on this subject is. <coughs> you know? So we have to think about like, what, what is it that, that's, that we're trying to get out of a student? What we're trying to help them to think about? Yeah, so use it and don't use it. Oh, <laughs> um, okay. And then, so that, so that's now, but this is, in maybe two or three hundred years time. So this is the Vulcan uh, Vulcan Science Academy. So 2009 Star Trek, this is what the future of learning looks like. What is the formula for the volume of a sphere? Four thirds pi times the radius cubed. One point two six. Oh. So the volume is bad. OK, sorry. Um, so you can see each uh, student is in their own learning bubble. Why do you think I share that? What, what's, what's apparent by that imagery, do you think? No teachers. No teachers. Oh shit. <laughs> that isolates Right? No group work. No group work. What else? No Okay. There's no point. There's no point. Okay. In there looking at a series of equations and things that there's no need for because something else will be doing that. Mm. You will be challenging what that what the system knows to make something new. You'll be asking it other questions. You won't okay. be looking at it at that, at that level. That would be a waste of brain time. Ooh, interesting. I love this kind of visceral response. It's I had something completely different. <laughs> like COVID, then. COVID, yeah, it's basically <laughs> lockdown, isn't it? <laughs> it's basically lockdown. Um but, as well. Yes, it's locked down, but with no keyboards, right? So maybe, maybe the oral tradition is something that we we might want to. That might that might have a revival, yeah. You know this this oral tradition, which is maybe more immediate. I don't know. This the written tradition might be moderated by. Uh, this stuff. I don't know, right? But yeah, podcast the world, yeah. Um, Does speaking something Well, I mean, it's it's a thing that was it was a thing that was the tradition of like Oxbridge, right? If you have that um, that seminar discussion, that was it. 
you you discuss the idea, uh, and I, and then suddenly it became much more about. I don't know. I don't know. These are these are open questions, right? Um. Yeah. So. What the hell do you do about AI? So, I mean, what? So what <sighs> yeah. Yeah. OK. I think you're right. So, so I mean, thank you for reinforcing that point is that it's in order to say do or do not do, you know, this is appropriate, this is inappropriate, it's like we need to be engaged with it, I think. I think that's the, I think that's, we've been put forward into that, that space, haven't we? Right? Um, but that guidance is really helpful, right? That JSC, I can't remember the acronym. Anyway, it was in the middle with a star. That's the thing. I think the key is to understand the motivation for overusage. So yeah. You're saying about talking to students, so the one student that I had this year where I spoke to the, by the overusage. Yeah. It's pretty much asking one what's the point because you are actually super talented, you've proven that without using AI. Um, yeah. If you are constantly producing completely AI generated work, where's that? Where's the employability going to come in, in, in years down the line when, when inevitably there's going to be mm. industry job cuts, uh, there could be a possibility? And where does the satisfaction, because he, he obviously was getting a lot of creative satisfaction from the stuff he was producing, but it was quite evident that a portfolio that's completely produced by Dali is mm. a shortcut, but it's not actually making him feel that same sort of positive feeling that he would get from producing his own work or producing work that's got AI to, yeah. to clean it up. Um, Agreed, yeah. I think it's like, yeah, the, the, the student's motivation to learn over the student's motivation to uh, gain a qualification and succeed and move on to the next step. So that compliance culture that's baked into assessment is problematic, right? Because they're like saying, oh, I've got to get the grade. Oh, it's got to be in next yeah. week. Holy crap, oh, I'll just get it done because I've got this hurdle. And we're not focusing on the development and the learning, right? And so this is, you're right, it's like a litmus test, isn't it? How much are we squashed by having to get these assessment criteria out of the way. You know, yeah. This is a much bigger conversation because... <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 right? I can have all these assessments. Is this the only way we can receive function? Is this the most motivated thing that the students... <laughs> agreed, and, agreed. You know, there are so many questions. But, but, but how wonderful that that pokes at our... Uh, core beliefs, right? It's like, oh, it's like waking us up by, you know, sticking a needle in us. Like, oh, I actually, I believe in, you know, the human spirit. You know. Yeah. Yes. Unfortunately, in the current environment, the reaction isn't 
to think how can we best support the student, the, the reaction of how do we stop them plagiarising and cheating. It's very, very short term. Yeah. So we have to be really careful about this. I mean, we have the GCSE, it's fine because at the end of the day, we'll say, well, you go to that exam hall and you have to do your piece of creative writing and your piece of persuasive writing. It's not going to help you if you get a computer to do it in the meantime. Um, yeah. So we, we do a lot of stuff actually in class anyway. But there, there are other levels where I think, and we've been critical of assessing everything on the exam and see the impacts it has. But it's not going to encourage the exam board to come around and say, you know what, we'll bring some current assessments back in, we'll look at some course, but if the risk is it's going to go as well. Yeah, you're going to say something, Alex. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, to, a while ago, um, I remember you were, we were saying to us that they, they could, as part of an FMP, you could upload audio files of students had some trouble writing. We did that. We found you had massive, so much to read through and listen to. You could really yeah. So, it was quite difficult having all these audio files. Oh, yes, horrible. Because. So, but, but the principle that students who have chosen a creative subject, probably they're not going to buy a seat sometimes. Audio files was a good idea. Could we? I was interested in what you said about how we could get students to record their descriptions in English as a second language, maybe lots of ers and ums, and use AI to really scrub that out into something that's actually reading. Yeah, yeah. Is that is that is that a thing? Well, that's exactly what the YouTube. That was that idea number nine on fun things to do with yeah, AI. Is that is that quite? It's, so you get YouTube, so you get YouTube transcribes it, auto you transcribes it. Like Dragon or yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, yeah, no, you're right. Just talk it into Siri or whatever. What you end up with is, is pretty terrible. It's terrible. And then AI just say, I am an editor for a magazine. I'm producing a, an interview. So you'd end up with method, rather than it being a few prompts, you'd end up with a huge, great blog of text. Well, no, it just. But then the student can edit it at the end. So, like the sandwich, so you've got AI cleaning up the Dragon Dictate. And then after the AI's cleaned up the Dragon Dictate, the student can then have another draft of it. Like, yeah, they well, won't. Well, but even, but so, even, even if you do that, what you're getting AI to do is not actually generate any of the content. It's just take the. Uh, it's formatting. And yeah. There's different, yeah, there's different levels. And, 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 and that's it. It's like. That is kind of engaging with the technology rather than saying, oh God, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's, it's that thing, isn't it? How would you do that? You just say, here's a big block of text, clean yep. this up. Yep. Yeah. But that's different yep. from all the things you showed us. Yeah. It was just a small problem. Oh, yeah. So when I said, okay, the more you put in, the better it is, you can put in a bunch of text <clears> and <throat> say, can you rewrite words. it? Yeah. Yeah. Some, some are limited, but like Google Bard, fine. Just put it in and say, can I rewrite this? Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, hold on. Yeah, go on. No, go on. Mina wanted to say something. Hi. I think I think from from my point of view, I think you know, following the AI, the AI and the campaigning, I think we need to take consideration the campaigning done from professional organisations like the Association of Photographers or the media like Focal, who are trying to protect the intellectual property. Because obviously, in order to create visual AI imagery, you do use images that other photographers and image makers have already done. Absolutely. So, so this is what is going in the parliament as we speak, with having these professional organisations taking into consideration how imagery will be used and abused, and uh, how photographers any visual image makers can protect the war without that kind of um, abuse. So I think this is something that we need to also point out it, to the students. Right. So now that you might want to, you know, get a married, get a distinction and reach the deadline with not a lot of hassle, but in the real world, there are a lot of issues of how the, the work might be in a position that it will be destroyed. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, kind of absolutely. And, and this is and this is why um, when, when I was uh, showing the writing of Jaron Lanier, who was talking about it being a social collaboration tool and, and the, the point that Lara made about did we agree to join in with this social experiment um, that uh, that yeah, that that's someone's individual visual voice is just being sucked in. So you can say generate for me an artwork in the style of 
uh, just like Dickens. Dickens is long gone. He doesn't care. But, you know, he's he's part of the creative commons now. Um, but that that distinction has been lost because it's mystified by this thing called AI. It's basically magic. So it just goes in and pretends to be this intelligence creating a thing. You're absolutely right. And that's the conversation that we have with our students to say, let's think about this. Let's think about this. That's, uh, yeah, our um, copyright um, lesson becomes slightly, yeah, it becomes slightly different, doesn't it? Right. It's it's, a, it's another layer that we added to our to our discussion. Yeah. Got. Uh, yeah. Go on. Um, one thing, one student used it in work this year, but she used it in a very transparent way. And she was designing a building, and she put in the terms 1920s eco brutalist in the modern style station railway station yeah and it was really useful to look at the images that came up of the benchmark what she was designing so it was almost like using it is to see mm. if AI was doing it well and see if she was if she was coming up with and she said oh i haven't really got many semicircles in and i should probably include that so it was a useful thing yeah so yeah, yeah absolutely because that mashup it does the mashup thing the synthesis it does that really well and that's what we're doing creatively is we're trying to synthesize ideas and that's like it's great. Yeah. It also is the program of the frames per second animation. Oh, smooths out the frames per second. Yeah. There's so we're in um, animation. There's there's an interpolation engine that's putting in between frames. So if you've got a like we, the I can't remember what it was called. D um, we haven't we haven't tried it. Yeah. It's like we know it exists. There's so many things, right? To make something that looks like a choppy animation. And turn it into something that looks like, uh, you know, something that's been filmed using, you know, high budget cinema, a CG. Incredible. Yeah. Yeah. There's so much. But it's the two things. That's 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 the result. That's that's where we started. It was like, use it, don't use it. Yeah. At the same time, you know, it's ex it's exciting, you know. Uh, do we have a cup? Do you have a cup of coffee? Was there anything else that people wanted to say at the end? Yep, yep, exactly. Absolutely, yeah. It's it's the it's this revise revise what what we you know is is it too easy? We actually might get better evaluations. The evaluations are actually really just. Painful. <laughs> <laughs> We've been doing a formal assessment Sunday, so asking students, so can you tell me a little bit more about this? Or mm. Can you read this word? Yes, yeah, read this. It's uh, like it's the follow-up. But 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 yeah, the the the, the trick, yeah, the, the pain is if you just got a whole bunch of audio files, you're tied to having to listen to something you know if it's yeah. a 20 minute audio file your marking has to take more than 20 minutes unless you just skip over it right so that's where this text generation that we can do quicker than real time it's there's a, there's a lot there's a lot going on uh i hope i've poked a few uh fleshy parts to to sort of you know, stimulate you, right? To to get you thinking about this stuff, right? Um, this uh, this thing, download that. It's great, and it's the official guidance. Um, but it's basically saying awarding bodies. Plagiarism is a thing now, right? It's not just something that we reactive against. We want to like look at it and. We put in, you know, have you used AI tools, right? I think that's great. And I think maybe this fun as well. Just to, yeah, those ideas. Okay, coffee. Thank you. Thank you.